Salwete! Acer Thorn de Lenda Est. Okay, now that I have confused the algorithm completely and made it think that this video is in Latin, let's get to the actual point of the video. In case you are not aware, there is a DMCA abuser. Every 60 seconds in Africa, a minute passes. But what attracted you to this video wasn't that, it was the title, that being how we actually defeated a DMCA abuser, and believe me, you are going to want to stick for this one because it's fucking hilarious. And those of you that have been here for more than five minutes probably know that, eh, Lee, didn't you already talk about this? And yes, I already did, but that was on my phone and while I was on holiday. I had already prepared this video in a certain format, but I decided to scrap it because Kretosis, the YouTuber link in the description, actually has a much better summary of who the fuck Acer Thorn is. If you don't know who he is, then by all means, pause this video, don't actually, click the link in the description and find out who he is. After you watch this video, please give me some priority, I need views and money. Speaking of being a money whore, this is David Stebbins, also known as Acer Thorn. If you want a quick run down on who he is, he is a doxing, dad stabbing, Texas law suing, parent suing, university suing, Filipino ladyboy loving, Virginia Tech incident threatening, Turkey enjoying degenerate. And despite the fact that I said I didn't want to talk about him anymore, I want to just make this video for the record to show you how we defeated this fucking DMCA abuser. And I say we for a very good reason. Behold the list. That's right, the list I've been keeping track of uh, since since he started all of this nonsense. This is the DMCA abuser's actions that I know of. The, just on the DMCA spectrum, this is all I know of. It could be more. It could be more. Because even as all of this was ongoing, that you'll find out soon, still we're finding new things about him, such as that time he threatened to dox the owner of a fucking wrestling forum. I'm not joking. Anyway, there's a quick rundown. This guy abuses the law like fucking crazy. He's tried to sue Walmart, Microsoft, Google for billions of dollars in the state of Texas for 5 trillion, which in case you don't know is a higher GDP than Japan. So you can probably imagine what happened when people found out that he was suing his parents and they started questioning him over it. Y you don't have to guess, here it is. And what do you mean? Uh, I'm getting some info from, uh, from people on Discord and shit telling me that you're, you're suing your parents. Okay, you know what? Fuck it. Fuck it. Look. Like I'm not no 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 not on the stream okay Yeah but it's just like it's not oh on God. the fucking stream And I've been getting Okay you know what fuck that now combine this with him accidentally live streaming himself for two hours, making turkey noises, talking to himself, being without a shirt on, disgusting. What's notable about this live stream is stuff like this. Years to come. What the Senate and other political institutions in the U. <laughs> As you can imagine, it led to a lot of mockery, considering the fact that he has been nothing short of a cunt on YouTube, his videos are a joke with terrible points, it made people laugh at him, and David Stebbins did not enjoy that at all. Now you may be wondering, Emily, didn't you just say his real name? And yes I do, pleb, because, and uh, let me tell you this one, he is someone who accuses people of harassing and doxing. How is that relevant? Well, when he saw people found out his real name, he went on to sue for the videos making fun of him for the distribution of his accidental livestream. Who the fuck is messaging me on Steam? Accusing Swiss streamer Safiyan P, uh, another kid who was a minor and a ghost who he was tricked into suing after he paid people to dox a person and then they just trolled him into giving him false information. Accusing all of these three of harassing and doxing and copyright infringement. Now, it's not copyright infringement as you may have been able to tell because of the fact that I mentioned it was an accidental livestream. If you don't know, in case you don't have a creative spark, if something was done accidentally, you can't copyright it. This is why you can't copyright things you do on accident, such as making a noise who the fuck is messaging me on Steam again. His accusations of harassment were bullshit, as you probably could have guessed, uh, because he defined harassment as the jokes that uh, Fi and P and friends made in private away from him in a Discord he wasn't even supposed to be in. And videos created criticizing him. This is a pattern you will notice from here on out. And the doxing? Well, he doesn't exactly keep his real name a secret. He had a video where he defended digital homicide of all people, where he advertised his guru page, which included his address and real name. A video in his YouTube channel. 
where he promoted his real name. That's not doxing to point to information you distribute, Acer Thorn. And, well, you know, the fact he just filed a public lawsuit against three random people. But this was back in 2021, and the lawsuit didn't really go anywhere, because Stebbins tried to get the court to serve Safai and P and friends on his behalf, which the court refused to do, so he had to serve them by himself. A task which he severely fucked up at, I think intentionally, because he wanted a default judgment. What's a default judgment? It's the other side didn't respond, so we'll side with the accuser. Which was what was on the verge of happening until a certain owl YouTuber came along. This owl YouTuber is your favorite furry YouTuber. Furry? Feathery? Cunt? YouTuber? I don't know. Kretosis. You see, he has a show called Stag. It's this live stream where he reacts to videos and gives criticism. This goes on for hours. Ten minute long videos go on for streams of five hours or whatever. Well, it was him and X Artemis Wolf. X Artemis Wolf was not present on the stream, but she was also someone who wanted to cover Acer Thorn's shitty videos. In the case of Kretosis, he and the Stag crew did not like the video at all. He made insane points in this video that I won't get into here. And eventually Acer Thorn pops up. Someone suggests they do a debate, and after the the stream they eventually do, and Acer Thorn starts insulting the stag crew after demanding civility. You know, it's what you do when you want civility in a debate. Acer Thorn was making claims that one of the stag members, Pagan, had memories of being beaten as a kid by his parents. In the case of Artemis, she wanted to cover one of Acer Thorn's videos, which she did, but unfortunately the editing in the video made it not so fair use. Still, Acer Thorn could have been cool and allowed the criticism, however he wasn't and said just take the video down, put it in private, and re-edit it, which Artemis did. And then after the video was private, Acer Thorn proceeded to file a DMCA takedown notice, because go fucking figure. Acer Thorn thought that was that, but what's ironic is that every action has an equal reaction. This eventually led to more people finding out about Acer Thorn, and because his name was already so public, people found out about his previous lawsuits, his previous shenanigans, his previous you-know-everything-by-now. Which led to, again, mockery away from him, not at him. Combining that with more people making making videos reacting to his shitty fucking videos or his dumb fucking behavior. Now in the story comes in me and Echo Wilder. Echo Wilder is a small YouTuber that did one video talking about how Acer Thorn was bad. But one thing I found remarkable is how respectful Echo was during that whole video. And I think if you saw it now, you would agree too. And Acer Thorn evidently agreed because he even said that this was fair criticism and that it did not violate his fucking copyright, which was all good, fine and dandy because none of his fucking content was included. And then I show up like an absolute mad lass and make a video I'm so great. I make a fucking video criticizing him, making fun of him, which is the grind set. And being absolutely based and amazing as I was, Acer Thorn decided to strike my video down, claiming that my video was harassing him. So he used the copyright tool to take it down. Let, let's think about that for a moment. He used the copyright tool to take down something he believed was harassment. Now, him being caught taking down more people led to more and more people finding out about the situation and criticizing him, which he did not like, which only really made him ramp up his DMCA abuse. Behold the list again, just for reference of how many people he was taking down at the time or trying to. I also received another takedown notice after he retracted the first one because I bullied the fucker into doing it. As as did Echo Wilder. Now, you may be surprised about that considering he said the video was okay. But Echo Wilder, despite living paycheck to paycheck, the mad last they are, said fuck it and decided to file a counter notification, and I followed suit the very same day. And so the Sid Alpha lawsuit was born. Who's Sid Alpha? Well, you don't fucking know yet because people only remember it as such, despite the lawsuit having been going on before Sid Alpha was ever added to the lawsuit. Yes, despite considering that this whole situation really is truly over and just making this video for future reference, I am still fucking pissed off about that. Not because it was Sid Alpha's name and not mine it was remembered for, but because a lot of other YouTubers who did their research and went really in-depth about it didn't even figure this shit out. And this is despite them mostly citing Sid Alpha's video on Acer Thorn, which he then went on to make later on, which specifically stated this. I fucking hate the video essay community on YouTube that does this drama research. I fucking hate it. You're all garbage. Well, most of 
of you. Anyway, I got sidetracked there, uh, never mind that. See, after Sid Alpha made his video, and was accused by Acer Thorn of being a doxer before the video was even made, where Acer Thorn tried to get his community to mass flag Sid Alpha's video, that was very interesting. The court battle had truly begun. Well, it was only in the complaint stage, that being where both sides send documents containing their evidence and their arguments and so on. Now, Acer Thorn alleged that me, Echo Wilder, Sid Alpha, and later the other people that would be included to the lawsuit, such as Kratos himself, were all being guided by Safian P. He also shot himself in the foot by linking this lawsuit to the Safian P one and including YouTube in it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we get to how he was defeated. In his lawsuit, he alleged that we had violated his copyright on so many occasions that it was actually unreal. What situations did we violate his copyright in? Well, by doing things such as including screenshots of his page on YouTube, which included his logo, which is a simple geometric shape. Now, did you notice how I failed to mention what shape it is? That's right, because he had multiple logos he tried and failed to register his copyright that were all just shapes. And in case you haven't figured it out, you cannot fucking copyright basic geometric shapes. He demanded insane amounts and things from us. Us. He demanded over a million dollars from me, he demanded all our electric devices be submitted for third-party impounding, and, most crucially, demanded YouTube, which is why they were included in the lawsuit, to permanently remove all of our accounts forever and ever and prevent us from creating any other accounts in the future. Google was also included. But now, did I mention that he also tried to claim ownership over his accidental livestream? Well, he didn't have it. He never did. He had filed it under false information and spent a lot of the time in the court trying to argue that it was fair use and that it did have creative spark because he made facial expressions. And also that he hates hot dogs, meaning that he intentionally did those actions, totally. While all of this was happening, Sid Alpha gathered a lot of money. I think it was around 30000 USD to defend against Acer Thorn and then eventually counter sue him into being labeled as a vexatious litigant. Little did Sid Alpha know that that was actually completely unnecessary. Remember how I said that he had filed his accidental livestream under false pretenses and lied to the judge in order to get copyright over it? Well, first you have to combine that with his false allegations, insane demands, ridiculous arguments, and insults of the judge. He then combined that with trying to circumvent vent the court system by removing YouTube from the lawsuit. Then when YouTube intervened, which was a surprise to virtually everybody, he tried to have them be ignored and accuse the judge of corruption if he listened to them. He then went on to lie to the court about his circumstances, saying he was not available to respond as a result of real life, misusing motions, and using the delays that he got from this lie to file completely nonsensical bullshit. It's a really long process and once again, I urge you to go watch Kratos' or Sid Alpha if you want a summary on it. While all of this was happening, we were all talking about the situation, and he continued to try to DMCA takedown us, but because he had included YouTube, he failed completely, and YouTube started blocking his copyright strikes. As time went on, he continued to flood the court with his nonsensical documents, arguing nonsense or completely wasting the judge's time by filing documents that didn't actually argue in favor of anything using shit such as, they're harassing me, so give me a million dollars, kind of thing. No, I'm not joking. Eventually, he contradicted himself in the same paragraph of all things. The judge, after months of this going on, decided to throw out the fucking lawsuits, both of them, then proceeding to threaten to label Acer Thorn as a vexatious litigant if he continued to file nonsensical documents, nonsensical lawsuits, or abusing the court system. Which Acer Thorn wisely decided to respond to with... Uh, multiple documents accusing the judge of corruption. Again, that is. After realizing he was thoroughly fucked, especially after Sir Alpha said he wanted to continue with a lawsuit to make Acer Thorn a vexatious litigant, Acer Thorn realized he was completely fucked. He had lost his viewership despite subbotting. His 15 minutes of fame were over, and his claim at money 
that was all he ever really cared about, it was always about the money, had completely failed. It had gone down the fucking drain. So he sent us emails, emails to the YouTubers he had previously DMCA'd, asking, telling us, begging us to roast his delusional ass. His words, not mine. Here's a screenshot of it in case you're wondering. And now you may be saying, well, Emily, so he beat himself? And I say, yes, he did. But what do I do if I'm being targeted by a DMCA abuse? User, I somehow hear you ask. Well, in case you haven't realized what the point of this entire video is, it's to tell you that just stand up to them. They don't have a point. If you are suffering at the hands of DMCA abuse and someone is trying to take you down to silence your criticism, just stand up to them. Make them own up to their actions. If you file counter notifications and they don't respond, after a certain number of them, their channels get terminated, and if they try to push it forward, they're the ones that get fucked. You see, the people who abuse the DMCA system, the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, they only really care about silencing other people. They don't actually want any consequences, which is the entire reason they're resorting to DMCA instead of, you know, letting a video be up and let people criticize them. The second, the absolute fucking second, they are confronted, they destroy themselves. We did not even have to do any input in the case of this lawsuit. And it may not even reach the stage of where you have to go to a court of law. A lot of DMCA abusers simply panic completely the second they are slapped back. And that's what you should do. You should not wait for YouTube to fix this because they are not going to. YouTube thrives off of these fucking people sometimes. It's a sad reality, but unfortunately, you're the one who has to stand up for yourself. You can't just make a video saying, Susan, please fix. Call these motherfuckers out, fight back against the DMCA takedown notices, and who knows, perhaps you'll find another Acerthorn who destroys himself so hilariously he ends up on Mr. Medicare's end of the month streams. Another Acerthorn. Another Acerthorn. Oh no. Oh no. No, I don't want to do this. I don't want to react to that. No, no, no. I don't want to respond to this fucking video. No, 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 no. Not another one. Not a fucking another one. Please don't do this to me. No, 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 no. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for rating. I hope you enjoyed this journey. The links to the other videos are in the description. And I will see you all next time. Thank you for supporting me. Ciao, ciao.